Hey, we welcome in a familiar face and a friend from back a couple of years with the Orioles, former Oriole right-hander Tyler Wilson. Here's the amazing thing about technology. It's Sunday night, East Coast time in Hartford County, Maryland. It's uh, late morning in Seoul, South Korea, where Tyler is, where he and his team, the LJ Twins, LG Twins, are getting ready to open a season on Tuesday. Yes, there will be pro baseball in the Korean baseball organization. Tyler, fantastic to see you. Yeah, always good to see you, Steve. Happy to be on with you. Well, let's backtrack a little bit because I think it's kind of, uh, a KBO is going to be a trendsetter here for MLB. That's the way I see it. Major League Baseball wants to get back later this summer. We don't yet know if that'll happen, when, what form, but I think they'll be watching closely what happens in the 10-team Korean baseball organization. You're about to start your third season there. Backtrack with me a couple of weeks because spring training was halted in your league as well, right? Sure, sure. Yes, sir. So we were we started in Australia halfway through the plan all along was a transition then into Japan, where when we were there, that was when things really escalated kind of into February, early March, when things got bad in Korea as well. Um, the team plan was for then to everybody to go to Seoul, continue our training there. However, collectively, the three foreign players, myself and two others, along with the front office decided it best for me to go home for us to go home and kind of buy some time and just wait and see what was going to happen. Nobody at that point really knew what to expect beyond it was isolated to China and had just spread into uh, Korea. So we went home for about two weeks, bought time in those two weeks, things got worse in the States and got better in Korea. So then in turn, I flew back to Seoul and have been here for about six weeks. As soon as I landed, I had to serve a, I took a test tested negative, And despite that still served a two week quarantine in my apartment. Um, and then for the about the last five weeks, I've just been training with the team and getting ready for opening day tomorrow. Wow, was that two weeks you can't really go out or you're very limited in what you could do? Two weeks was not going anywhere. So when I got into the country, the protocol at that time was they take your temperature, you fill out some forms about where you'd been in the last couple of weeks, if you had had any symptoms. And then you had to download an app on your phone that granted them permission to track your location. And if your location wasn't um, identical to what you had reported to them where you were supposed to be quarantining in your home, they had full right to come and get you, come and detain you, deport you, fine you, do whatever they wanted to do to you. Um, I've read articles about, it hasn't gotten to that extreme, but in about a dozen cases, they've had, they've sent people out of the country. So Obviously, couldn't didn't want to risk that, so I spent the two weeks in my uh, apartment, um, cleared out one of the rooms, and used that as kind of my training center. And team brought dumbbells and kettlebells and TRX bands and all the the works. And then I played catch with a mattress for two weeks. <laughs> wow, I mean, do you feel? I mean, obviously, it's nothing like what you would have been doing. Did it at least keep you active enough that when you could leave the apartment, you were onto something? Right, right. Physically, my, my goal going in was to just try to not lose a ton of ground. Uh, I knew realistically, you're not gonna uh, refine anything in, in a 12 by 12 room. So I was just trying to, to stay disciplined enough to keep my body in a, in a foundational place to pick up where I left off. I, I hope that that went well. I did a good enough job to do that. My first my first game here, I threw in my first exhibition. So coming right out of that, I had a eight day throwing program through a bullpen or two and then jump straight into I threw three and a third innings and then I threw five innings. So, um, you know, hopefully when the season starts, I'll be good to go five or six and depending on the game flow, but you know, it, I tried to keep a routine. I had, I had a, uh, my plan. I woke up at the same time. I ate at the same time, trained at the same time. And then all the accessory things that I did, I tried to, to keep some rhythm to have expectations because I mean, as we can all relate to when you're in a room and you've got the whole day ahead of you, it'd be easy to just say, I'll do it later. Or, I'm going to finish this or I'm going to watch the show or I'll finish this chapter and another chapter. And then all of a sudden it's late afternoon. So uh, I think it proved fruitful, but, you know, we won't really be able to tell for a couple of months, I don't think, to see how my body reacts. So what was baseball like? in those exhibitions what was it like getting to the park was there testing because there were no fans then and there are going to be no fans when your season starts right when the kbo season opens that's correct so right now 
we had, I guess, about six or eight exhibition games. Uh, every time, every day when you get to the stadium, they take every player's temperature. When you're in the stadium, you're isolated from any media members, um, any outside people are not really allowed into the players' area um, like they usually are. They're blocked off. The tunnels that connect the two locker rooms or the stadium area in general is blocked off. Um, and then when the game starts, the only people that have been in the stadiums are the media members and then uh, any broadcasters, which I guess are media too. But So I pitched in my first exhibition game, and it was eerie. I mean, I, they're just sounds that you're not used to hearing. I could hear my spikes in the dirt. I could hear my, you know, the batter digging himself in and the way that he was moving around, just little side conversations in the dugout. I could hear the broadcaster in the booth, you know, just sounds that are typically drowned out by your standard day to day at the, at the ballpark or aren't there anymore. So one in between innings and, uh, it took a little adjustment and throwing your warm-up pitches, the first two pitches of the inning feel a little different. But once you get into the rhythm of the inning, the batter, once you get situated, all that kind of went away and it just – you lock back in on, on what's the task at hand anyways. But um, it'll take some getting used to, for sure. Is it true that you're, you're still wearing masks? You're not wearing masks in, in when you play – but on your way there and on your way home, and even maybe managers and coaches and umpires are wearing masks? So they, they're advising us to wear masks when we're not playing. Uh, I mean, that's just general safety kind of protocol. Even though cases are in the single digits here in Korea and life is operating as normal, restaurants are open, malls, public transportation, everybody's out and about, but 80% of people are wearing masks. Um, when we're at the stadium, you can, nobody's wearing anything as we're training. As the games start, umpires have to wear masks. And then in the dugout, training staff, um, anybody that's not a player or coach that's in the dugout has to wear a mask and gloves. So they're trying to implement as many extra protocols as they can to, to minimize it because they recognize if anything were to get worse or any, anybody were to get a case, they'd have to shut the league down. So they're trying to really hammer on those protocols despite um, them maybe being more than the traditional day-to-day -day outside of the baseball field. Tyler, is there any talk of that, those restrictions being uh, lessened as you go? Because did you say there are fewer than 10 cases in the entire country recently? So, I mean, that's – I mean, you're almost at zero. I mean, uh, do you see – Fans don't getting the games, masks, uh, less uh, as a recommendation as you move forward? I really do. Uh, so for I, I, probably about two weeks now, the daily new cases have been less than – have been in single digits. Um, and walking around in my firsthand experience from my apartment to the stadium and then going to grab food here and there, running uh, errands, the amount of – people that are out in public is increasing by the day. The amount of people wearing masks in public is going down by the day. Um, so I think eventually uh, we'll get to a point where, where fans will be back. I really don't, I have no clue on, on that time frame. but I mean, schools are back. So, I mean, kids are interacting with one another. People are in, you know, social distancing mandates have been totally lifted in the country. So people can gather and however they deem appropriate um, while obviously practicing, washing hands, all those different things. They still have sanitizing stations at every entrance. Uh, they have thermal cameras at the entrance of most public places to monitor body temperatures and stuff like that. Um, but, you know, I think soon enough, we'll, they'll start transitioning fans in. They're tabling the idea now to see what those phases look like. I think they, the initial just, you know, kind of off the cuff ideas I've heard are, you know, maybe selling every third seat and every other row or something so people can get in while still practicing social distancing. But, you know, inevitably there's going to be people that cross paths. And so in a long-winded answer to that question, yeah, I think soon enough it is um, going to happen probably in the, in the near future, um, but I, I'm not sure exactly when. Well, you give us hope. I mean, I think uh, Korea, South Korea gives the United States hope as a country, what you've said, and, and KBO for MLB, the sport we all love and want to get back, but we want it to be safe and everybody to, you know, whatever restrictions are there, 
they're going to be there. Do you think, uh, Kyra, that the KBO will, in fact, be a sort of a role model for MLB later this year? Sure, I hope so. You know, I, I hope that, you know, the way that these last couple of months have unfolded are eventually going to serve as a template for, for what we can hope to see from the MLB here in a couple of months. I mean, everybody, including over here, you know, I want the MLB back. You know, I, I love watching games from over here. I love following my buddies. I love following my teams, you know, like um, I'm looking forward to it being back. We need pro sports back. You know, it's a, it's a unifying thing for, for all of us. You know, I, I think back to when, um, you know, special moments and in, in sports history, like, not to, I guess, to compare it similarly, but I, I'll never forget when, you know, George Bush threw out the first pitch after 9-11 or when, you know, the Saints scored, recovered that first fumble in the end zone after Hurricane Katrina and just this, this sense of unity that sports has the ability to, to bring our country together after catastrophe. And so um, I think that first game, that first day of games after all of this happens is going to be um, equally sentimental and emotional for our country and is going to be a chance to, to demonstrate how coming together can can lead to us overcoming something so challenging as this. Tyler, you had a nice run with the Orioles. You overcame some odds, 10th round pick. You were never this highly ranked prospect yet, but there you were on the mound in some big games in Major League Baseball. And, and your numbers in the, in the Korea have been amazing. 14 and 7, 292 ERA last year. Uh, two last two years, 23 and 11 with a 299. I mean, tremendous uh, numbers. Are you a better pitcher now? What's been the key to pitching so well for the LG Twins? Sure, I appreciate that, Steve. Um, I think that one of the biggest things for me in, in these last couple of years has just been the confidence that comes with um, – really feeling like I had a, a, a team that believes in me. Um, I, I really felt like every day when I showed up that this was my team. You know, this is a, this is a team that I'm a part of, that um, I know who my teammates are going to be every day. I know where I get to go to sleep every night. Um, I don't have to worry about moving my wife um, in the middle of the night or our boys now. Um, you know, so just the, the stability. I know that that's part of the business and you know, that's how things are. And, and somebody's got to play that role in every team. And that's the way that it goes. But to be here and to be relied on and to be um, able to go out, take the ball every fifth day and be relied on, um, I've, I've really felt like I thrived in that role. And um, I'm thankful for the confidence that the organization has put in me and for the way that they've shown me with their actions, um, more so than their words, that, that they care. Um, and that, that I'm here and I'm a part of something bigger than just me. It's bigger than just one person or a collection of individual pieces. Um, you know, this is a unit. So um, that's played a big role in it. And as a byproduct of that consistency, I've been able to learn new things. I've been able to afford the flexibility to um, not get experimental in games, but to challenge myself, um, to be confident in myself enough to to pitch differently, to, to change and evolve with the game rather than feeling like I'm constantly trying to establish myself or prove myself to um, everybody else around me. I know that I'm desired, cared for here, and I can go out and just compete and find ways to win. And that's the total focus rather than any type of self-preservation or looking over your shoulder. I get to stare at the guy that's in the box and say, hey, man, it's me and you. Let's get this. And it's competition and it's essence. Um, and it really drowns out all the outside noise. It drowns out all the voices in your head about what could be after the game. And um, I think that it's taken my game to a new level beyond that. And it's taken my enjoyment for the game to a totally new level. Very cool to hear that. And that would lead me to guess whatever baseball is left for you down the road, and hopefully it's a long road, will continue in Korea or – is it even possible that MLB could still be in your future under the right circumstances? Sure. I, th I think that caveat at the end and under the right circumstances is, uh, is the important one to, to focus on. I, I love playing in the KBO. Um, I've thoroughly enjoyed it for all of the right reasons. And, you know, my pride would say that I want to come back to the States and want to prove that I can be an established big leaguer. I want to prove that, um, you know, I'm more than just a guy that overcame the odds and, and had a chance to pitch for a couple of years and, you know, was just a, 
and up and down for a guy like I, I I'd love to come back and, and take another shot at being more than that. But that's my pride talking. Um, you know, at this point in my life, when I look at my wife and my two boys and, um, and what is ahead in our family's future, you know, that's what I think about. And, you know, here we're afforded the chance to, to have stability, to be able to spend time together. And baseball is a challenging lifestyle where here I get the chance to, to see him three or four days a week. Um, you know, the travel is a little bit better and we don't have to worry about having apartments in two different cities. And, um, excuse me, I, so my heart and, and for the right reasons makes me think that this is what's best for, for my wife and my boys, so long as we're playing to do it here for, for the right reasons, you know, and, and as I said, I'm, I'm happy here. And, um, you know, I enjoy the camaraderie. I enjoy the relationships that, that are integral to this league. And, um, you know, so I think for the right reasons, for the emotional reasons, the core reasons, um, you know, Korea makes the most sense. Um, but all that to be said, I'd love a chance to be back in the major leagues and, and playing in my home country and playing against the greatest players in the world. I mean, that's the ultimate competition. The competitor in me wants to compete against the best players in the world every day. And that's no discredit to these guys here, but, um, you know, that's the, that's the pinnacle. That's what everybody here wants to be too. So, um, there are a lot of layers to that question, Steve, but you know, I see, I could see both, both being a possibility and, and I would be, I'm just grateful for the opportunity to still be playing here and my going into my age 31 season. And despite all the odds, like you talked about. So um, I'm just grateful. I admire any young man that can make the major leagues. Cause I know how hard it is to do, whether you're the first pick in the draft or round 20 and you earned everything you got. And I think it's so cool to see you so happy. And I'll bet when you look at those 20 year old, 20 month old, excuse me, don't want to skip ahead too far. 20 month old twin boys. Uh, life is good right now for you. Absolutely, Steve. Uh, you, you nailed it, man. I, I appreciate that again. And um, they, they put things in perspective. And, and Chelsea, obviously, you know, my bride is, uh, she's my pride and joy, right? So when I get to come home from the stadium and, and see her and then see our boys, it, it, um, it really keeps things in perspective. I'm thankful to, you know, we're still on the other side side of the world we're away from our family and friends and in our network and in our home but you know it's a it's a fair trade-off to be able to to look at them and and to see the opportunity that we have the the experience that we're going through right now the the things that um we're learning that you know probably would never have been afforded outside of the game of baseball so in general, I think we're just trying to, to take every day as a, as a chance to, to learn and as a chance to see baseball as a, a vehicle for our enjoyment and for our growth and for our development as, as a couple and as a family, more so than um, as a vehicle for any type of, you know, tangible gain or goal achieving or, um, you know, looking to get to the end of the line. We're just really trying to take it one day at a time, as cliche as that is, but to to use the game as a way to learn and, and to use the game as a way to, to enjoy life and be present exactly where it has us. Well, I miss our chats about UVA where I once worked and you're a proud Wahoo, but I'm glad to see you doing so well. What a great thrill to talk to you tonight, my friend. Uh, half a world away, I wish you health and another great season in the KBO. Yeah, same to you, Steve. Thanks for having me. Miss you guys, man.